Hello everybody, this is Campus Games and welcome back to War Thunder 101. Uh, we're gonna cover a few things today. Uh, the first thing is um, how to bolster your defensive protection on a tougher vehicle such as this Turtles Heaven. Um, the, uh, though that this will not work on a lighter armored vehicle, for example this little ASU-57 at 43 battle rating has a cannon that has most of the cannons have over 100mm penetration at that tier and this thing only has 6mm armor so in this case it will never work it's gonna die if it gets seen that's why this thing is so small and stealthy but for the armor vehicles that is quite a valid tactic we're gonna start out with that which is um, the first one is side scraping okay for side scraping I would have to um, go into test drive for this thing First, so it loaded for a moment. So, oh, um, for side scraping, I do have to roll up a little bit. Actually, we can use this thing here as well. I'm gonna stop this uh, for a uh, confession. I'm gonna substitute this wreckage of this KV1 as a wall. So, just think of this thing as a wall where it blocks off the entire vision. And basically, an enemy over there towards that building uh, there are two ways to roll out if you want to fire from cover the first uh, version is like this like uh, right now I would be in cover I would be able to shoot because the cat is over the uh, wall in this case and over the one in this case you would have a wall going up so you couldn't fire so you have to roll out like so then you can fire before rolling in, but you are rather exposed. They can easily penetrate your frontal armor and stuff like that. There's actually a tactic that's even more valid. Again, you got our enemy over there. And if you want to shoot, you can. It's actually much better to align yourself with the wall first, like this, without exposing yourself. Shit, so you can start out by. Like, uh, just driving up to it like this, a little bit diagonal, and then just centering yourself. And rotating it like this, and then back up slowly. It takes much longer time, you will be exposed for a longer while. And then just tilt your angle, so the tip of your uh, left side, right here, always um, is in line with the front, so they can never shoot your frontal armor. Because it's much less angled than your actual, like, own... Uh, vehicle. So until you're right here, then you can shoot. But what happens if enemy shoots you this way? I can see if I can try to hit this guy um, like that. Actually, I should roll up for a moment, and I can show you guys that. What happens if you guy if you shoot something at a very shallow angle? Got a plane flying over. This is of course the. Standard test drive mode where you can try out your vehicles. Also, you can try out the uh, premium vehicles which you have, uh, have not bought. So, you can just try them out if you like them. So, yeah, here we got ourselves a Panzer 2C. Uh, Very lightly armored vehicle. We can easily penetrate this vehicle like so for a normal shot. But. What will happen if we? Sh I mean, let's let's take take a look at this angling like so. This is a medium armor vehicle, but I can easily penetrate it. But what happens if he starts angling itself like we did? Like so. What happens if you shoot? It bounces, and you will not penetrate the uh, actual gun. Actually, the actual vehicle. Same way here, if you angle it like this. And they shoot the side of your tank, you'll bounce off and deal no damage. That's why you always shoot, it's always better to shoot, uh, let's say, this frontal plate, even if it's thicker than the normal actual um, uh, plate that uh, that's our that's like slow part here. Now, at the slow one, you have a higher chance of bouncing. See? Here, I bounce and do not penetrate. Well, if I uh, simply shoot it right here, I go through it and in 
this case, I'll kill the tank in one shot. Same here, shooting straight. You can use your penetrate it. But once you get at an angle, it starts to get harder and harder and harder to penetrate said vehicle. Also, even just having a better angling, like not being having not having flat, being even at just like an angle similar to right here, already improves your survivability. Because if I just stand still for a moment, always already looks like I there are parts here that I cannot penetrate. Probably. Here we go. I can't really penetrate that part because it's too angled for me to actually penetrate. So always try to angle your armor. If you're just facing it somebody which is directly, so like this in front. So let's say it's like this yellow building right here. So that's like this angle. Try, try this uh, such stuff like this. So if you put a clock from top, like so, think about it as putting your. Um, front towards 1 o'clock and your rear uh, towards 7 o'clock where if you're front of the gun where the gun is facing would be um, 12 o'clock and this is the most time optimal angle although there are exceptions to this rule for some tanks you do not want to do this because those things are so called pre-angled such so as this IS-6 and the picture I'm, let's just scrap that one yeah, I have six preview. So yeah, you got this extremely slow front of armor, 65 degrees. A lot of parts uh, shot, uh, shots for pause on this bit. But you also got these diag diagonal plates. In this case, the diagonal plates are also 100 millimeters, so it is not that much of an issue. These ones are also 100 millimeter. But if you would angle this thing, they could uh, they would expose this part, which is also slow, and, and make this part in comparison weaker to comparison to this part. Something that would be even more option, uh, obvious would be something like my Porsche Tiger. Oh, I already got it right here. If we look at this frontal part, we got this 200mm frontal plate to, uh, that is to 100mm plate. But we also got this diagonal parts with only 82mm 80, thickness. But if you are at the front, they're around 130mm thick. And these rings are over 200 millimeters. So even though there are weak spots because of the angling, they will most likely bounce. But what happens if you tend to angle this thing a bit? The armor thickness will go down, got this angle to around 90 millimeters, and it will pierce right through it. And guess what's behind that? Some ammo, and you're gonna die. Also, do not over angle because otherwise you exposing your side armor too much and of course exposing your side armor since it's generally weaker in this case 82 millimeters compared to the 204 millimeters on the front is much thinner than the actual armor especially here so 62 millimeters it's not pretty also um, to counter a few, uh, few of these things I'm gonna point out some general weak spots in armor front frontally which you can exploit the first one is being the lower glazes this one it's rather small one but um, let's search some higher tiers uh, I think the Tiger 2 is a good example for that you see this giant upper plate 150 millimeters sloped at 52 uh, degrees and giving effective armor thickness around 140. And but this part right here is only 100 millimeters, and it's uh, angled at 48 degrees, 49. It's a little bit random, but it looks fit. But that's only an effective thickness of around 150. 150 to 240 is quite a big difference, especially if it's angled. 190 to 50 or even more if you go up again it's always smarter to shoot flat parts like this 185 millimeter frontal plate on the turret than something like this big slow plate even though the slow plate is thinner because it's sloped it's effectively thi uh, thicker 
If you're facing a tank on the side, always try. Uh, uh, you have to watch out for the tracks, because tracks will eat shots. But if possible, try to shoot between the wheels, through the actual armor right here. I mean, this is 20, this is 80 millimeter. In this case, it is not really that much difference, but you got 80 millimeter, and this is also 80 millimeter, and you also got these five millimeter plates. But if you go back again to the Porsche you can see the 82 millimeter, and to compared to the 62 millimeter plate. So if you doubt you can penetrate your side armor, try to go for that lower part where there's space for the tracks made. Where, uh, so uh, like under the overhanging part, because most of the time that's thinner. Also a very effective place to penetrate a lot of tanks, is gonna be the third ring. This little part right here, 82, 100 millimeters. I mean, if you look at the front of the turret, you've got 135 millimeters right here. You've got a very slow part of 100 millimeter, so that's 170 millimeter easily. Then we've got 120, 200 millimeters even, and then a part of 90 millimeter with another 100 millimeter behind that. So the effective thickness here is 190 millimeters. So the weakest part is going to be these two tiny little plates, 120 millimeters. Which are very hard to hit. You also got this little throat ring for simply 100, and if you go slightly underneath it, 82 millimeters. That's a bit thinner, right? 190, 200, 135. I mean, the only exception is these two tiny plates, but here, if you got your elev elev um, sorry, elev um, elevation right, you only got you can go left right as much as you want. And you only got one hundred millimeters. Another thing thank that's really uh, a good example for that is the KV2. 75 millimeters uh, armor. But they can easily slope a turret. But what they cannot slope is the turret ring. Shoot the center of the ring and you will probably penetrate and steer. Because seventy five millimeter is not actually that thick for for battery battle ring. Here we're gonna take the KV-1B. This one, as said, there are some exceptions to this reel. Even though this thing only has a 30 mm turret ring, this one has these little edges where that are higher than the actual uh, end of the normal hull. If you take a look at this, here you got the top of the hull, and then here you got your actual add-on plating. So those add-on platings will cover the turret ring. Or you also got other versions, uh, like for example the. Um, okay, in this case you can still fire on the third ring, 127 to co compared to 152, but you got this actually thicker part right here, which does make uh, take consideration also that it's really hard to hit. It's almost impossible to hit some times the third ring. But yeah, there are some exceptions, but there. If you know no other options where to hit you and then it's an option to hit. Next option is especially uh, apparent on German tanks. So it switches this German version of the KV2. We got here we got 405 mm frontal armor. That's thick. You're not gonna get through that easily. Okay, you got this 50 mm weak spot. But it's small. And my case is behind the push, and it's right at the place where the gun is at. So you can only fire it if the gun is aimed at you, and you do not, of course, do not want that. And all around, otherwise, it's 105 millimeters. So where do you shoot? This giant blob on top. It's only 50 millimeter thick. If you look at the X-ray, underneath that is the commander. And in reality, the commander would probably be standing, so it should be higher up. You also got the loader and gunner. If you shoot explosive, you uh, note that you have to use explosive rounds or sorry, uh, Britons. You cannot use this tactic because they only have solid shots. You will uh, be able to shoot the explosive into the tank and it will go downwards and it will disable the entire third crew. Third crew will take around five, uh, five to ten seconds, depending on how good you are. Um, here, let's see, crew. Wrong button. Crew agility. It takes 14 seconds stock. Actually, 14.7 seconds stock. 
for somebody to get replaced and 9.67 at top speed so you have just under 10 seconds to fire a new position and shoot him again I then suggest fire if you do if you cannot penetrate him normally like front of your side get to the rear shoot the engine have him catch on fire otherwise just re after 9 seconds once the turret starts turning just immediately shoot the turret running again and another explosive will come down the turret and kill the replacement gunner. Because most of the tanks only have, tr have 5 people. Inside with 3 people in the turret and three or 2 in the tank. It's pretty much standard that there are only 2 guys in the tank and just the camera and crew in the turret. In this case 4 and 2 in the hull. Or let's see. Do I got one with 2? Uh, I got one. Two players in the turret, two guys in the hull. It's pretty much standard to have two, three, or four guys in the turret and then two in the hull. So you only get one replacement gunner in there, but they will not get the loader. So you also, if you even if you fail to kill the gunner if the second shot, they will still have the downside of having slow reload time. If they have a commander with a machine gun. Such as the uh, M18 with his machine, with this uh, tactical machine gun up top, he will not be able to fire it because he uh, lost the commander. The machine gun in front actually does nothing; it's just a backup member. But so you they only have the driver and the gunner left, which does make them very limited in their options. Um. Of course, you do have your crew replenishment. Also, if you are gonna uh, modify your vehicles, I would suggest this: first parts, then one of either tracks or horizontal drive, then fire prevention equipment, then one of these. I suggest getting your better uh, shot if you can get first. Then get crew replenishment, then get your other better shot, your better round, and then um, then you can go research anything you want. Because these three here are the most important parts. Without them, you cannot repair your vehicle. So if you get damaged, it's permanent. And if you lose your engine or your gun, then you're screwed because you can either not shoot or not move. Fire prevention system is also very handy because if somebody shoots your engine, it's very likely to catch on fire. And if you cannot put out that fire, again, you're screwed. And crew protection, sorry, crew replenishment is simply that you can get one more crew member after you lost one or more of them when you're in realistic and uh, only in cap zones but uh, when you're um, in uh, arcade mode you um, get that in anywhere on the map so you basically get one backup member at the cost of some extra time and in which that time you cannot move so that all adds on on your survivability and make sure uh, that you're, if you, even if you get shot, you have a less likelihood to instantly die unless somebody one shots you, which actually is possible if they have enough explosive matter or if they hull break you. If, in case of the Hellcat, every round into the hull, you're instantly dead. I actually got killed once by actually getting shot into this corner and just penetrated. In reality, there will probably be just a hole in this corner but it will break which is kind of a bummer but you do have to watch out for that of course while uh, with something like uh, something compact you uh, that's not as big as this Hellcat I mean this Hellcat is quite spaced out but if you get something that's kind of cramped oh right this one oh right, this thing actually has three in there all a extra loader you don't see that actually that often. But yeah, you uh, rather cramped. If they shoot the front side of this turret, they will always take out these three guys. And then they can easily go down and get these machine gunner and loader in the back. Yeah, those are in the back of the uh, hull. And if you have this only the driver left, you will die anyways. Unless you can immediately crew replenish when you're at the capture point. So yeah, there are kind of limitations there. But you can get one shot as well, but again, it does improve your survivability. Yeah, 
again, um, slope your armor, if possible, watch out for that upper placement. Uh, um, it's also one thing that you can actually do to improve your uh, survivability a lot. I'll simply go and just try this thing again. Just to go hold down compared to your enemy. I'll simply, uh, I'll use that KV1 again. That burning wreckage. And I'll fire to the, at the fence to see from here. This thing is pretty slow though. First let's load normal rounds instead of pure hard explosive rounds. High explosive rounds don't do much against even just a light tank like that. Now my guys, I'm pretty tall. I might actually be able to shoot over in hard maybe too. But yeah, they can fire me at me like the entire hull pretty much. But if you're behind something that's partially hiding the hull, like this, um, KV-1 burning, right, like this wreckage of the KV-1. And we can, in this case we cannot really fire over it, but uh, we can just take cover behind it and we can shoot from here. Like so. They can only hi uh, hit a small portion of us, like the turret. And yeah, especially if you manage to get your good cooldown position with your tanks. You might be able to get your like position that you only can see your turret like the enemy uh, for the enemies, and it will ne neglect any weak hull armor, uh, and it will just generally increase your survival protection. The easiest way is just like get one of those wrecked and wrecked tanks and just chill behind it and just shoot over the engine bay or front part, depending on where the turret is. In this case, the in this tank the turret is further forward, so you have to shoot over the engine deck. In this case, here you've got the center position, so you can fire at the rear and, and over the front, so that's not really a problem. And lastly, um, if you you all, all also, of course, have the hit and run tank kick, that you go out of a corner, shoot, and go back to into the corner. But I do have one tip for that. Always, if you move out, wait still you're sta stabilized before going in. It's better to wait that one second extra to get your accurate shot or instead of actually missing your shot and then getting shot yourself you of course have to risk that if the enemy is already looking at you that you get shot before you can get your extra shot off but then you shouldn't be moving out in the first place so you always shoot um, the always uh, get uh, for if you also if you're engaging two guys or more at once first shoot the gunners and then just repeat that because uh, as soon as the first one starts moving the turret immediately shoot the turret again and go for the second one shoot the turret again so you chip away at the crew members while keeping the guns disabled you don't really have to disable the entire tank in one shot you just have to keep them from shooting you but yeah um, I'm actually gonna do a um, match with the uh, if I can grab it right here with the jumbo. My beloved jumbo, I finally got it. It's very heavy tank, and very good armor for its tier, but at, at the cost of having a rather weak cannon. But that said, we're gonna get the match, and I'll show you the effect of angling with this thing. I might actually make a mistake and get flanked. Okay, in this case, small chance I can go just do the uh, thick of it. And tank up all the shots this is gonna be fun <laughs> so I got a 75 millimeter gun the same you can find in a normal Sherman uh, currently 51 normal AP rounds I don't I have a lot of the APHE style rounds just yet yeah this gun is the, at 4.7 BR it's the same gun as you can find on a uh, BR 3.3 So yeah, it's a weak gun. But in return, yeah, you got this very, very powerful armor. Okay, we only fire, uh, fire, uh, fight the Russians, so we can fight one problem, which are going to be the KV 85s, T 34 85s. Those have some nasty penetration values. But I believe we can do this. Looks like I've been up to it anyway, at least 
5.0. 5 and 3. At least 5 and 3 battle rating. Okay, that's a bounce. Bounce, as you can see. Okay, turret ring, turret ring, turret ring. Go. Oh, too high. Crap. Bounce. Wait for the smoke to clear. Still shooting too high. I need to get the turret ring shot off. I gotta shoot this guy. There we go. Turret ring destroyed. Oh crap. That guy's smart. Now, yeah, as you can see, no fire prevention system means I'm dead. I'm out. So yeah, the turret ring on T-34-85s especially. Get that turret ring. I'm very, very dead right now. One T D R D four eighty five got a burning shot on me. Sad. Okay, I got my M ten light armor, slow but a good gun. It's kind of the opposite of the jumbo. But yeah, as you can see, most tanks will die in one shot of the thirty four eighty five. And I managed to bounce three shots just straight up, and after that, even to, uh, take a few more shots before I'm dying. Oh, thank god, that ASU-57 would have done much damage if um, he wasn't there. Take out the commander and driver, and there we go. Very light, so just machine guns is already good enough. That's an auto cannon of a sub rope and air gun. That as well. Okay, let's jumbo roll in front. I'll have to deal with the 3485 through the turret ring again. Break. Let the heavy roll up first. Always better to roll up the heavy first. I'm gonna get up this hill. There we go, got another SPAA with my heavy machine gun. That's the advantage of having an heavy machine gun on a American tank. But it's disabled again if you lose your commander, which the first one is to go after the um, radio operator is done. Let's target over here. Sys 43 is dead already, but it looks a bit. I'm going to the right, so I'm, we need to cap this thing. Watch over the machine gun. Yeah, this thing. No, I want to know you guys. This will re. That's a slow turret. 3.6 degrees per second. Turret rotation. It's not really anything to write home about. <laughs> actually, writing home about uh, it would be quicker than actually uh, rotating this entire turret. 306 degrees. Oh crap. There we go. One guy. Crap. That's a problem. Jumbo, be my shield, I'll be your gun. Oh no 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 this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. I can't handle two guys at a time with such a slow turret. No no no. Okay, we got a guy right there. Attention to the map! 
and a guy right there. Attention to the designated grid Come on, we're out again. We're out again. I'm actually gonna re angle my hole slowly, but I need to get it to keep it gun on target. Come on, come out, Jim. Ah crap. Great. Two guys. One thing this thing cannot do. They got two guys at once. Let's take a few of each rounds. I'm not gonna take an entire full because if you do you have a very high chance of having exploding ammo and I do not want it. Okay, first task when we're this far into the match and losing. Watch around here. Good example of why you should group around. Thanks like that. Have a tendency to spawn man. Oh crap. Did he even get a chance to turn my gun that way? Oh well. Guess that was a loss. That's like an auto match. Jumbo. It can do even more when it's down tiered. Then it has like 3.7 pens for G. If you face the pens for G, it's gonna shoot you even at a sloped side like this. And it still won't penetrate. And just hilarious. No, I actually had that once when I was in the Panzer 4, uh, 4G and I was like why the hell can I not penetrate this sh I thought back then that it was normal Sherman for a moment why can I penetrate the Sherman with my gun on the sides but then I discovered it was a jumbo and he shot me in the face <laughs> that's I guess the downside of not knowing your tanks guys do you know your tanks? If you're gonna play this game, believe me, you're gonna learn the tanks fast. At least kinda know the difference between KVs, Shermans, I'd say, at least, and Crusaders. But yeah, that's raw Jumbo. This guy we got facing the Germans. And Japanese, and we're up to it again, I think. KV 4.7, we got here the fireflies. KV 1 is 4.3, so it actually looks pretty good here. KV 1 E is even lower. The issue 152 is, I think, 4.3 as well, so it's really looking pretty good. In terms of lineup. I want to go left here, and I want to go enter right there, just where the wall ends. I'm gonna go bust through that wall. Gonna give me a really good position to start out with. Or I can just follow this firefly. Let him be my gun. I'll be a shield then. Up. He shot him as well. Ah, I was too slow again. Bounce. Vertical hit there on driver. Japanese have a tendency to put the driver on the left side. Loader. Wait for him to move and get his driver again. He's already dead. Back up a little bit. See where that shot's come from. Attention to the designated grid zone. 
Kyrie got one. Also already dead. Come on, rather boring as everybody dies before I can shoot him. Let's turn left here, bust through the wall. Help of folks at B. So the fire coming in is not really a problem for this thing. If you got a tier fire coming in. If you got something with an open top, then run away. But otherwise, you can probably slug it out. Dead Jack Panzer 4 right there. Oh, bank. Head, sir. I don't think I can penetrate a head, sir. Let's see. Bottom plate. Oh, yes, I can. Okay, left side. Oh, there goes my gun. Ah, oh, crap. Of course, thank you very much. Flank, I'm burning down, so. I'm just gonna back up and wait as long as possible before I'm dead. Like, I don't even have freaking repair parts in this yank yet. Engine compartment is damaged. I already know that, thank you. Let's keep spawning this guy. German KV-1B. Got me in the side. There's a pumpkin on top of that. Okay, let's take the T14 for once. 32 armor, piercing high explosives, should be good. And a few T15 shots. APCR shells. I uh, have the same gun as I used before. Slightly thinner armor, but this thing is still has pretty decent armor. But uh, currently, I got the better two types of shells. The a better solid shot armor piercing weapon and the high explosive. Where's the plane? Oh, uh, that was low velocity. Plane, let's shoot that plane a little bit. Jack Benzer's dead. Oh, uh, yeah, head sir. Jack Benzer DAT. It, it doesn't aid us to uh, Jack Benzer DAT, but always, I always call that it, it called the head sir. And I always get confused by that. Yeah, this thing is also really good in angles. Not as good as uh, the normal one, but still pretty good. And I got a kill system on that plane by just shooting a few 50 kills on it. Lol. Guess that works. Gonna bust through here. And shoot people at A. If I can see them. Let's see anyone just yet. Anyone else here? This will look like it. Okay, that's cool. A little bit of tank drifting right there. Okay. You know, let's cap this point. Just gotta pull in here. Back up. And actually, let's angle myself like this because if I got this over part in front. Let's angle right like so. 
So everybody comes around the corner, I still have these very slow fucking armor. But don't you really need that. Let's go around the corner and move out. I always like to do that. Need a real steel shell though. Spencer for G is not good. But oh, there we are. <laughs> Lol. Gotcha. Yeah, this thing, once balanced, it can do some decent damage. Just takes a little bit longer. Let's see what was there on the right. It's on the right here. And GG guys. So yeah, that's actually the power of the <laughs> heavier tanks. If probably slowed, you will not penetrate them. So yeah, that's about it guys. I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you guys all later. Bye bye.